Let's suppose that I take a ball and I throw it straight up. And in doing that, the ball goes up to some maximum height and then it returns back down to the place uh, where it was thrown from. And so if I gave that ball an initial upwards velocity v, then it has some initial kinetic energy ki. The ball goes all the way up to the maximum height and then it returns to its original position and it will have the same velocity uh, in the opposite direction which means it should have the same amount of kinetic energy. And so we're assuming that on the way up and on the way down the, the air resistance is negligible and so there's no loss of energy as the ball goes up or comes back down. It is fair to say that, that as the ball is moving up the gravitational force points downwards on that and because of that gravitational force there is work being done on that ball. The work that's being done by the gravitational force is slowing down the ball. But then as the ball uh, goes to the top, turns around and starts coming back down, the gravitational force points in the same direction as the velocity and for that reason it's doing positive work on the ball. On the way up it was doing negative work. And so by the time the ball returns back to its original position, the gravitational force has done an equal amount of positive and negative work. And so the work done by the gravitational force is equal to zero. And so really there's no change in energy. If uh, we didn't neglect the air resistance, and there will be some energy loss as it's gone up and come back down. But for the, for the case where air resistance is negligible, then the change in energy would be zero and there would be zero work done by the gravitational force. One way that we know that, that this is true is because our understanding of gravitational potential energy tells us that these two balls are at the same position, the same height, and so whatever kinetic energy they had at the beginning, uh, yes it was converted into some gravitational potential energy uh, between those two points, but then converted back into kinetic energy the same amount of kinetic energy when it returns to its original height. If I extend this now uh, to say that the ball is thrown at some angle, so it's still some initial speed v naught to give it some initial kinetic energy, thrown at an angle like this, and the ball goes up and comes back down, and the initial and final positions still occur at the same height h, so the ball returns to its height h and it has some final speed that is equal to its initial speed due to us ignoring the air resistance. In this case as well the gravitational force which acts on the ball does negative work on the ball to slow it down as it's going up and then once it gets on the other side uh, of the peak of its trajectory that gravitational force which still points down is doing positive work to speed the ball up. And so between its initial and final positions, once again, we could say that the work done by the gravitational force is zero and that the change in energy is equal to zero. When the work done by a force is independent of the path that is taken, but depends only on the initial and final positions, such as I've shown in these two examples, those types of forces are called conservative forces. Conservative forces. And the best example of a conservative force that we have is the gravitational force. And so for the gravitational force, we define a type of energy, gravitational potential energy, which is equal to m times g times h. Before I pull everything together, I need to talk about uh, the second type of force that I want to talk about, and that is non-conservative force. Non-conservative force, or non-conservative forces. Forces that are non-conservative are forces that do depend on the path that is taken. So for instance, suppose that I have a room. So we're staring top down on a room and there's 
an object that is at point A, and I would like to move that object to point B. If, let's say, we're just pushing a box along the floor from point A to point B, then there are an infinite number of paths that I could take between those two points. I could uh, take a path that looks something like this. I could take a path that looks something like this. Or I could take the path that goes directly from A to point B. If there is friction between the object that I'm pushing and the ground, then the longer the path that I take, the more friction that will act on that box, and therefore the more energy that will be taken out of the system and, and you know, converted into thermal energy which gets transfer transferred to the floor most likely. And so the difference here is the work done by a non-conservative force depends on the path. Okay. The work done by a non-conservative force depends on the path. Depends on the path taken. In each of the paths that I've uh, that I have drawn, a different amount of friction acts on that that box, and so we're going to use the the frictional force. Any type of frictional force, as an, our main example of a non-conservative force. And in order to express how much uh, work was done by um, a non-conservative force, we use the equation for work, which says the magnitude of the force times the distance over which that force is exerted equals however much work was done uh, by that force. The reason I am differentiating between conservative forces and non-conservative forces is because when we write the equation delta E equals W, any change in energy in a system is equal to the work done on that system. What we mean by W is really WNC, the work done by non-conservative forces. The work done by those forces which depend on the path taken by the object. And so we, we know now that if I take an object and I move it along some path and bring it back to its original position, for any conservative force, the work done by that, that force, for example, the gravitational force, is zero. But if I take an object and I move it along a path and bring it back to its same position, for example, uh, friction, even if I take the object and move it all the way to point B and then I bring it back to point A, there will still be work done by the frictional force regardless of whether or not I brought it back to its initial position. So forces where the initial and final position is all that matters, uh, we will call them conservative forces. Our example is the gravitational force. And forces which depend on the path taken, like the frictional force, we call non-conservative forces. And those are the forces which we deal with in that work term in our law of conservation of energy equations.